SCP-7819, The Rest Easy Motel. This is a very liminal, very uncanny, and very strange motel complex with several similarities to the back rooms, if I'm being honest. Today, I want to dive into its lore, its strange effects, and more importantly, how to survive an encounter with it. Nothing else to say here. Let's just get into it. Hey, all, I'm Brugley, and today I'm finally, finally making videos about SCPs. Please don't unsubscribe. I'm known for my backrooms videos here on YouTube and some Trevor Henderson lore as well, so I figured what better way to hop into the SCP universe and to go over my first video on SCPs than go over 7819, right? It's very backroomsy, it's a liminal space, it's full of elements that the backrooms has, and I'm gonna get into all of its lore literally right now. If you want to see more SCPs, leave a like so I know. Hopefully this doesn't flop. If it does, I'm going to be sad. But with that out of the way, let's get into it. SCP-7819 has an object class of Keter, uncontained, and it's described as follows. This SCP manifests itself as a very predatory physical location in the form of a small roadside motel or hotel. It's located somewhere on the network of numbered highways in the USA, and there's a ton of them, so we have no idea. But the motel always identifies itself by a sign that says, Rest Easy In Vacancy. You'll notice that it's an old neon sign, and the motel will always have a sign that advertises empty rooms. In order to make SCP-7819 appear, and in order to interact with it, several conditions have to be met. You're not just going to run up on it by accident or anything, unless you meet all these conditions. The time must be between midnight and 4 a.m. in the local time. You must have been driving for longer than five hours straight, with small stops included. But the total hours have to be five plus. You also will have had to be a past or current member of the Foundation. And lastly, you have to be alone in your car. So in order to even see or interact with this SCP, you're going to have to meet all those criterias to witness it. If you do, upon driving near an instance of SCP-7819, you'll start to feel extremely fatigued and utterly exhausted. Your eyes will grow heavy and your blinks will get slower and slower and slower. As of now, it's not 100% clear if the blinking and the tiredness is a symptom of the SCP or if you're just tired for driving longer than five hours, but I'm just going to assume that it's the motel causing it. Either way, this tiredness will get worse and worse until you pull off on the highway into the parking lot of the motel. But what if you don't pull off into the parking lot? What if you just keep driving and just ignore it? Well, the tiredness and fatigue will stay and your car will actually be teleported back the way you came for a few miles. And this will happen without you realizing it. And you'll pretty much get sent back and forth and back and forth. And the cycle will continue until you choose to pull into the motel's parking lot. So you pretty much have no choice once interacting with it. Once you pull into the parking lot, you will still feel very tired, very exhausted, and this feeling will maintain until you interact with the SCP. In order to survive this SCP while you're under the effects of it, you need to follow the steps I'm about to tell you in the exact order and to a T. You need to remain calm and relaxed while doing so, because being accurate and efficient is way better than speedrunning. You know, don't go messing things up, just listen to what I'm about to say. To survive the SCP, firstly, you have to park your car in an empty space in the motel's lot. Park around the other cars that are already there as to not draw attention to yourself. Get out of the car and grab your phone and personal effects like a wallet or purse and your keys and a toiletry bag for the night's stay. Make sure not to bring any big suitcases or backpacks or anything because honestly, that'll just slow you down bring only the necessities. When you get out of the car, begin to acknowledge and look around your surroundings in the parking lot. You'll see some strange anomalies almost right away. The other cars in the lot will not have logos from real life. The wheels will not be made out of metal. They'll be made out of wood. And some of the cars look like they're paper mache. It just makes zero sense. But no matter how little sense it makes, do not investigate anything too closely in this parking lot. Just pretend it's not there and keep going. Locate the entrance to the motel lobby and find it and walk inside. The second you enter the lobby, you'll notice your surroundings again. A dingy, empty lobby with a front desk. Make your way up to that desk and begin to wait. 
The desk will have no one behind it, and in fact, you'll notice you don't see anybody, even though the parking lot was completely full. As while you're waiting in front of the desk, it is recommended to hum your favorite song while you just stand there, because the silence in this lobby area has been described as oppressive. And I'm sure the last thing that you all need is oppressive silences while standing inside of an SCP. After an unknown amount of time, you'll begin to hear something from behind a door that's located behind the counter. The second you hear these noises, stop the humming and just listen. The noise will be anything from minor shuffles and knocks to little taps and feet noises. When the noises get louder and louder, you need to do the following. Bang your fist on the desk as loud as you can over and over without speaking. This may seem strange because it's completely quiet and it's late at night, but you have to do this. Once you do, a room card will be slipped on the desk right to you. Just grab it and then say thank you to whatever just gave it to you and walk away and find the signs that lead to the elevator. Your room number will not be on the card, so don't get your hopes up, but it always will be on a higher floor of the motel. Now, even though the motel from the outside might not look tall, the likelihood is there are more levels, you just can't see them. It's one of the enigmatic things about this SCP. The buttons in this elevator are also in illogical locations and they're patterned in weird ways. So to find your floor, just press the button that you're immediately drawn to, and it's usually the right one. On rare occasions, you might actually have someone else in the elevator with you, but they are not human, so do not interact with them. If you're about to get in the elevator and there's a figure inside that looks like a clean cut older man that's wearing a coat, don't even get in the elevator because he's going to try to beg you, you know, he's going to hold the door, he's going to be like, hey, come on, get in, get in. And keep saying no firmly over and over. If you get in that elevator, you'll never be seen again. Just wait for the next one. And when you do get in the elevator, it will take much longer than you think it should, as if time is warped inside of the elevator or something like that. Times range from 15 to 30 minutes, in fact. So don't lose your mind, don't lose your cool. You're gonna get taken to the correct floor. Well, eventually the elevator doors will open to your hallway floor. And you'll have no clue where to go because your card does not have the room number on it. So just start walking straight down the hallway. Do not investigate any rooms that are open or ones that intrigue you, just keep walking. The hallways themselves are empty and carpeted and lifeless. They actually look similar to Backrooms Level 13's hallways, where it's just very empty and liminal. Anyways, walking through the hallways, you'll notice that they are not linear, and that you're probably going to get lost, even if you're just walking straight. You'll eventually meet a crossway, where two hallways meet into a T. In order to navigate this crossway, you need to just pick a direction to go, and just do it, without thinking. No dilly-dallying, no standing there, go left or right or, or back, just go any direction without thinking. Doing so will lead you directly to your room, and you'll know it when you see it. Use the key card in the opener on the door to get into the room and walk inside. Instantly, you'll begin to feel a cool rush of air from the room hit your skin. Make sure you prop the door open until you turn all the lights on inside as well, because we don't know what happens if you're completely in the dark in the room. The layouts of these hotel rooms make no sense, to be honest, and they pretty much look like they were designed by a two-year-old or a member of the Brugly Bunch Discord server. The colors don't match, the beds are weird shapes, there's a strange amount of chairs, and the layouts are just wrong. But your biggest order of business is ignoring all of that and finding a bed to sleep in. Do it as soon as possible, without hesitation, just go. Get in the bed, get under the sheets, and you'll eventually will fall into a sleep for lack of a better term. Now this sleep will not last long because you'll wake up randomly inside of the hotel hot tub, exhausted but awake. You'll notice a pool nearby and that the area you're in is just reminiscent of a real life normal pool spa area from a hotel. There's dim lights that hang from above, the smell of chlorine fills the air, all that stuff. Now you cannot get into the pool at all because it has some sort of thick membrane on top. It's almost like a clear jello or something. Don't even try to get in it. Strange things live in the water. There's no doors leading from this area to the outside, so don't even look around for them. All you have to do is get back into the hot tub where you just woke up and then swim to the bottom of that hot tub to find a certain object. The hot tub will be way deeper than a normal one, like seven or eight feet deep, but there will be something at the bottom that you need to get. The log included on the page has an instance where Agent Sabrina Maxwell found her engagement ring at the bottom of the hot tub, but it could be anything. 
Just make sure you grab it, swim back up to the top, and then once you do, you'll notice that your clothes are neatly folded on a table nearby. Get out of the hot tub and put them on and start walking your way to the room. You'll notice that there are doors to get out now. On your way back to your room, you'll pass the breakfast area, which is just like any other hotel's cafe area. There are seats and chairs and a buffet and all of that, but you'll still notice that it is nighttime. The problem is, the buffet has food out and drinks, even though it's night. Do not eat the food, as it's plastic and styrofoam, and there will always be one person sitting at one of the tables in this breakfast area. You need to go sit with them at that table. Now, the person will try to get you to stay and eat, but you have to keep firmly denying them over and over until they just stop asking. Once this point is reached, and once you are annoyed by that person, walk away, gather yourself, and walk back to your room. Once you begin the walk, you'll be in your bed again, and you'll wake up the next morning well-rested, but ready to go. Gather all of your belongings and make your way through the liminal halls to the checkout area back in the lobby. The first thing you'll notice when you walk out of your room is that the design of the building changed in the time you slept. The layout's different, the carpet's different, the light's different, everything's different. Ignore it and walk to the elevator. Once you get to the lobby, there's going to be no one at the desk again. I don't think anyone works here, but you'll see that same person over in the breakfast area sitting alone. Put your room key on the desk of the lobby and walk out to your car. At this point, the lot will be empty besides your car, which is different because when you got here last night, the lot was full. Now it's empty. Next, all you have to do is get inside your car, hit the highway, and just you'll be on your way. You'll be done. The sun is shining on your face, you're in the car, and you're just happy to be outside of the motel. If you followed all of those instructions to a T, if you didn't mess up, if you didn't cheat, you'll have made it out of this SCP and hotel alive and well. Man, that rhymed. If you didn't, you're probably still trapped in the cycle of sleeping and waking and wandering the liminal halls. This SCP is genuinely one of my favorites, and it's not just because it's so similar to the backrooms, it's because it captures the liminality and transient nature of motels, and all of the parts of them that really try so hard to be like home. You know, all the beds, the pools, and everything like that, but this SCP shows their dark and creepy underside. I think it's super cool, and I really enjoyed reading through it. Hope you did too. If you want more SCPs from the Brugly style, let me know. If this video flops, then that sucks because I really do love SCPs and I really hope you will too and I, I think you will. I have a good feeling. Anyways, thank you for all you do. Love and appreciate you all. And I know that I don't do SCPs like all the other SCP YouTubers do, but this is my style. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I did. I'll catch you with whatever spooky video I make next.